American Water Polo. Hi, this is Damon Newman from American Water Polo. And we're here today with David Casa from Whittier College uh, to better understand the college recruiting process. How are you doing, Dave? Doing great. Thanks so much for having me. Excited to be yeah. here. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate the time. Um, so tell me a little bit about yourself and, and, and a little bit more about Whittier. This is my second year full-time at Whittier College. Previously, I coached at Long Beach City College for 18 years. And uh, this year we won the Division Three first annual national championship for men's. I coached both men's and women's. The women's had a great season going. Unfortunately, it was stopped. Like all the seasons were stopped. Uh, but uh, really excited to work with you know, student athletes that are really motivated, hardworking, good teammates. That's excellent. So, you know, as we kind of expand a little bit more in the, in the talk about recruiting, what, what can athletes do to get recruited? What, how can they promote themselves? Uh, what's been your experience? I, I think the best way is uh, a student athlete can get an athlete resume together, okay. spend some time on representing themselves the best way that it can including their GPA, their studies, perhaps what schools they want to, you know, in terms of uh, what part they want to study, whether it's math or engineering or computer science or English, um, include swim times, height, weight, uh, any awards they've received, community service they received. Those are all things that they can put on their resume. Um, I, I did I answer the question? I think I did, yeah. but um, yeah. I think a resume would be a great idea. Um, definitely want to communicate versus uh, email for the coach you want to talk to. For me, the first introduction via email is a great idea. Um, send that resume, send a video clip or a game that they may have, and it gives us an opportunity to see if they're a good fit, if we're recruiting that position and uh, we can start creating a relationship from there. Okay, great. So it, in your experience, how, how would like a high school coach or say a club coach, what, what's their role in, in, in helping the, the athlete get noticed? Uh, I, I think communication is great from high school coaches and club coaches. Uh, talk to a lot of them all the time. They'll text me or call me or if I bump into them at the pool, they may have a student athlete that would be a good fit at Whittier. And um, they may be able to tell me something I can't see in a video. You know, you might see their size, you might see their speed, you might see their skill set shooting the ball, but they may able, be able to talk to me about the character of the student athlete, whether they're a great leader, a hard worker, or um, just kind of confirm things if you're interested in the student athlete. I, I typically will reach out to um, coaches to see what kind of person this is and uh, so I welcome everyone to talk to me. Okay, excellent. So when you when you're um, talking to a, a PSA and and you talk talk a little bit about those character traits that, that you talk to with high school coaches, um, what are some of those character traits you're looking for um, when you are you know recruiting somebody to potentially play for you? Yeah, with your college, we're looking for student athletes that are committed to both academics and athletics, hard workers. Uh, team players we talk about we instead of me a lot at, on our team and that really was reflected in the championship we won this year is I had a, a ton of guys that were really talented and could score the ball but they were willing to work together for the best possible you know result and ultimately that's what the kind of athlete or student athlete that we're looking for someone that's committed someone that is a student of the game wants to get better very coachable uh, I love leaders. I love, I love character. So, you know, like I said, we had a ton of that on this last year's team. They didn't care if they scored as long as the team won. And, and that kind of led to our championship. And if I could get that type of athlete every year, I'd be very excited. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you, you had a lot of recent success with the, with the men's team. So, you know, including, including your, your, your history as a coach, you know what it's like and you know what the makeup you need to, to win championships. Yeah, I mean, even going back to Long Beach City College with Coach Oding, uh, we won seven state titles there. And right. I believe, you know, the men won 16 out of 18 years, the conference title. So I really feel like I understand what type of characters we need. Um, and 
someone that is really wor- willing to work hard and getting better and understanding their role and being a great teammate is, is really what I'm looking for. Yeah, that's excellent. So when we talk about these PSAs, when should they, brew, when should they start this process? Um, obviously, NCAA rules are such, but you know, what would be your recommendation? Um, you know, when, when should they get started with the process? We typically start communicating with people their junior year okay. at the Division three level. I can't speak for Division one if they want them earlier or not, or if they're communicating, but the junior year seems to be like the best fit for us where they can email us, we can start communicating in that way. They, they can't have an official visit until their second semester of their junior year at Whittier College. Typically, most people would go on an official visit that first semester of the fall year uh, in through the spring at our level, um, but they can the junior year and the second semester. But we can start communicating via email. They can send us their schedule. We can start going out to watch watch them play their junior year heading into their senior year so that maybe they have an idea going into their senior year where they want to apply what best fits them as a student athlete okay great so as these athletes prepare to say um you know reach out to coaches you know to establish that relationship you're obviously going to talk to them whether it's via text or email or phone how would you recommend the student athlete prepare for say a phone conversation for, for you know, with the coach? I think they definitely want to be able to present the best version of themselves. So it's something they want to take some time practice with, but they definitely should have their resume there to be able to answer any questions uh, about who they are. Not only that, then they can be specific and ask, you know, what positions are you recruiting? What, ask the coach what type of players they are, you know, they're looking for, what I think a student athlete should know what kind of coach you're going to play for. I'm a fundamentalist. So you want to know what style that coach has. Um, But also definitely research the school you're going to talk to. So if you're going to go to Whittier, what kind of majors do we have? What's the student life, you know, be able to ask questions about what's life at Whittier like, what's the area like, um, what are the academics like, you know, in particular, if you really know what you're going to major in. So I think I talk to so many student athletes and a lot of them don't really have an understanding of asking those questions. And I want them to ask me questions so that I can truthfully answer what, you know, this is the life at Whittier and, you know, perhaps it may be a good fit for you. Right. Speaking of life at Whittier, you know, what is that like for, for student athletes that are matriculating right now for you? Um, so Typical classroom is 12 to one student teacher ratio. So you get a really great personal relationship. And I think that's what you get at a lot of these great division three schools, private education, a lot of personal attention. Um, Teachers really communicate with the students. The faculty came out, we had great faculty support at the national championship, which we hosted this year, but they came out to lots of other games. So you get really that unique experience where you get to know everyone. it's definitely different than a lot of larger universities, but I think the the balance is, is you get to focus on athletics and academics. A lot of my guys are doing internships in the off season, studying abroad so that when they graduate, they're going right into uh, a job and being potentially really prepared for that. And they may even have contacts already. I'm seeing guys graduating, going, getting hired by businesses immediately. So that makes me feel really confident of the education that they're receiving at Whittier. Yeah, that's great. That that's uh, you know, as as much as it is great to win, you know, you know, you know, national championships. It's always really, really good to feel uh, you know feel really well, good to you know, see your athletes go and you know, be really successful after they graduate, right? Yeah, I mean, I tell them the first day, both the men and the women. Um, that we want to win in water polo, we want to win the classroom, we want to win in life, and and that's the kind of student athlete I'm looking for. And you know, I had some great women graduate and go into grad school right away, go into jobs. Um, the women's team has a oh seven or eight dean's list students, so the fantastic academic environment it shows what kind of committed people they are. Um, and the men as well. The men um, are really committed to both both aspects. And I think it really teaches them balance in life because we know 
in life, we're going to have to balance all kinds of things, work, family, uh, pandemics, et cetera, right? <laughs> the pandemic stress. Uh... Yeah, yeah. It, it works for us because, you know, I talk to my guys that I water, my men and my women, I talk to them about how a game, you know, is something that you have to deal with adversity, whether you're dealing with an opponent or good luck, bad luck, or the officials or uh, the flow of the game. And we talk about dealing with adversity all the time and that the game is a roller coaster and, and life is very similar. And we're witnessing some of that right now. Right. right. That was, that's really, that's really well put. So with the, you know, speaking of the, the outbreak and then the COVID-19, um, you know, pandemic. So there are, and the potential loss or, or loss of rescheduling some large tournaments, some, some things that you would typically go to or some other coach would typically go to, you know, what should a PSA do to be seen during this time? I, I think you can definitely put video together. I prefer to see video of a game that may represent them uh, the best or a, maybe it's a championship game or a high level game that they're playing in. It, it's got a good flow to it. And the reason why I would rather see a half of a water polo game or a full one is just you get to see the whole flow of the game. You get to see all the elements of the game. I get a lot of uh, highlight films, mm -hmm. and they're they're not bad. It gives me an idea of what to look at. Uh, but I definitely recommend putting a half or a full game of a game that you're you're proud of, as well as a highlight film if you want to do both. But if I had to choose between the two, I would pick I would pick a full game or a half of a game just to get an understanding of what kind of player you are. Right. Um, but the video I think is a great idea. Um, definitely with the, the student athlete can email us. And then when we get back into everything, let us know what their schedule is, where they're going to be playing, keep us updated. What are some, um, you know, in a typical recruiting year, what are some common tournaments that, you know, that obviously you're, you're located in Southern California uh, locally for you. What are some of the common places that, you know, co you know, players would typically be seen by coaches? Yeah, I mean, so we typically recruit uh, in person out here. It's something that I would like to get back to the East Coast at, at their top tournaments um, or the Midwest for that matter. And something that's definitely a plan at Whittier, but I just started. Um, so that's, it's a little bit more complicated with the finances, et cetera, sure. but um, definitely on my radar to do so. Uh, the women were able to go out to Brown this year and play. It was the first time ever at, at Whittier College, and they had a great experience. Had some good water polo, and then got to do – we toured Boston and did all that stuff, yeah. which was great. In terms of tournaments, uh, we go to ODB, ODP championships, JO championships, local high school championships, um, Cap 7 tournament, things like that, everything that's in our area. We do travel to Northern California when – uh, when that's available for us. Um, but we're, it's definitely on our radar to get out to the East Coast as well. Yes. And if we get more interest from people from the East Coast, it's going to happen for sure. That's great. So as we, as you kind of go through this process, you've been out of for, for a number of years, could you give me a misconception that, that athletes have about the recruiting process, whether it's parents or athletes? Yeah, I think for at Whittier Colleges, we, we don't have athletic scholarships, the biggest thing. The people think I can just, oh, you really want me? I, you can give me this money or that. And the misconception is that the grades matter the most for us. If you want to be a Division three athlete and you want to have success and if you want financial help, um, and a lot of these Division threes, you need great grades to get in. Um, but those great grades will help you financially in terms of Whittier College with uh, merit aid that we have available, also being able to get into the school. Uh, so it really puts the student and athlete all together. And uh, I love talking to kids and say, talking about their school, about their grades, about their commitment to their academics, and that, that they're going to have opportunities, whether it's at Whittier or somewhere else, if they do a great job. Right. Not just in water polo, but in, in school as well. Yeah, yeah, so you're exactly like this, every, every division is a different level of commitment financially but you know the bottom line is you do well in school and your high school level and, and you're going to be able to have your some options are going to open up for you uh, yeah absolutely more options um for success and i think that's the best advice i could give to a prospective student athlete um as well as become a student of the game get better every time you can whether that's faster or stronger or 
find an understanding of what your role might be in terms of what your position is or what your role is and really, you know, watch tape of somebody that's a great player, whether it's a Tony Azevedo or somebody and work on that and work on getting better. And then for me, it, it, it all comes down to fundamentals, you know, improve your fundamentals every day. And, you know, that's something I work with my guys, even though we won the national championship or my women and they were a top ranked team this year is just getting better fundamentally every day. And it, it, it helps you in the end. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's spoken like someone who, who has, who you know, really grinds in the fundamentals. And I think that that's really important, you know, whether it's your age group, high school or, 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 um, or college. Yeah. I think a lot of guys come in and they think like, okay, I, I've went through age group water polo and then I went through high school and now it, and it's, and I, I have to be the guy that tells them, Hey, we're not leaving these alone. We're going to grind on them every day and, and it's going to make us better every day. Yeah. Yeah. That's very true. Well, one final, one final question. So an athlete is interested in playing water polo, um, you know, beyond the high school level, you know, what should their next step be? Um, in terms of just communicating to the coaches, I think the, Obviously, I think the first step is make sure your grades are going strong. Work on that academics, commit to it. Then commit to your, whether it's your club team or your high school team, commit to being the best player that you can be and best teammate that you can be and work on that on a daily, um, on a, work on it every day and set high goals for your, yourself and work hard to obtain those goals. And then look at the different schools, look at the different divisions, try to find the best fit for you. I mean, I know everyone would want to play at Cal or USC or UCLA or wherever, but you may not, or on the East Coast, you may want to play at Harvard or Brown or Princeton, you know, but you got to find the right fit for you, whether it's the coaching staff, the academics, um, where you fit academically and athletically and, and really communicate with coaches and try to find what that fit might be um and i think you just communicated as many coaches that you feel that you feel would fit you and um and go from there and that starts for me with email and sending an athletic resume and then you start having phone conversations and text conversations down the line and maybe visit as many schools as you can to see if that you know if that school fits you the best um i think that's the best advice i can give Great, great. Well, Dave, this has been a really a pleasure. This is a Dave Casa, the men and women's coach at Whittier College, giving us more information about college recruiting. Uh, this is Damon Newman from American Water Polo. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and our website, AmericanWaterPolo.org. Remember, it's important to stay connected to what's important to you.